Victory Road! Everybody has a story to tell, to tell How you got to heaven When you came from hell Victory Road! Where miracles unfold On Victory Road Won't you come with me to victory Down Victory Road Victory Road Victory Road Victory Road Hi and welcome to another fabulous episode of Victory Road where you will hear the most exciting stories from celebrities and real people how God has touched their lives and now are on their Victory Road and today I'm sitting in this beautiful home of our present guest who is such a successful businessman, great husband, great father, and great friend to many. And um, I'm very, very happy uh, to have him with us and, and to have us enter into his life, to hear his victory story. And um, before I introduce him, I always like to open up with our Victory Road verses. And one of my favorite is Isaiah 35, verse 8 through 10. And it talks about the highway to holiness, a victory road that the unclean can't walk on it, but only the holy can walk on this road. And this road is the road of victory. And on this road, all sadness and sorrow will flee. All tears will be dried up. And that's what our story is about today. When you hear this man's story, he might make you laugh, he might make you cry, but at the end, you're going to have words of wisdom that has touched your soul. Please help me welcome our fabulous, wonderful guest, Mr. Brad Murray. Thank you, Brad, for having us into your house and your heart and your lives and giving us a peek into your history. And I wanted to start off real quick with, to give our viewing audience a little peek who Brad Murray is. Um, I believe you were born in Iowa, right? <laughs> I was. I was born in a uh, small farm town, uh, population 2,000. Oh. You know, the same 65 of us that were born that year went all the way through high school together. How cool is that, though? Oh, yeah. It, Who gets to say that? Not many people. You've ever seen the movie Hoosiers? Yeah. It, it kind of looks like that. Our basketball gym was like that. Uh, you know, on, on ball games, the whole, the whole town gets behind the bus. You know, and, I love and goes to the ball game. So, yeah, it's a great uh, way to grow up. It wasn't like a suburb; nobody was right. going anywhere. Mm -hmm. And so, at the time of being there, it was kind of like you couldn't wait to get out. <laughs> <laughs> but then, when you look back, it was just such a that was a safety cocoon. That was a it, little, it was a great way to yeah. The, the, being a big fish in a small pond has a lot of benefits down the road. I think too. It does, yeah. and I want to also touch on now. You ended up, well, let's talk though. I want to touch on a little bit of your childhood because you did make me giggle. <laughs> you did make us laugh earlier. He had a very unusual childhood growing up. Not many of us can claim this either. <laughs> you want to tell us the profession that your father had <laughs> and how you were raised? Yes, my, my father was the, uh, the local funeral director. And so, you know, in these small towns, the funeral home is, is a big house. So yes. we lived in this big four-story plantation style built in the late 1800s. <laughs> and it, you know, we lived in it and it was the funeral home. And so like I, I joke with my kids, it's like there's, if they ever get scared, I'm like, you have nothing to be scared. There's not even a dead body in the house. <laughs> you know, cause in my house, there was always a dead body. Visitation every night downstairs. I was watching my father embalm bodies from the time I can remember. See what I'm talking about? So that would have scared me In my bedroom, there was a door that was an elevator shaft that went the, the length of the house. And to this day, I can't understand why my mother would put me oh. in a room where the door goes to an elevator shaft. <laughs> oh, my goodness. She assumed I couldn't reach the key, but, you know. Uh, anyway, that would be scary, too. I always tell people that when, when I'm at a dinner table and nobody knows anybody, I can usually, you know, buy at least an hour of time telling these funeral home stories. So oh my we can stay goodness. on that as long as you want to. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're going to have to do a part two on that. <laughs> I, I was telling him earlier that would have, I was a very scared little child. I grew up in a, a big, big 
one of our homes was this big, scary, old two-story home that would creak at yeah. night and make all these sounds. Put some so caskets in there. And I was some, a scaredy cat some... at night, so I can't even imagine surviving <laughs> that. Yeah, every day, every day was Halloween at my house. I, I guess so. <laughs> wow. And so, how many brothers and sisters do you one have? One older sister. Just one older mm, sister. Yeah. Same here. Two of us. Too. Yeah. And was was she okay with the situation? She had no choice either. She was she was raised in the <laughs> she same was in house. It. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Now, did you sometimes at night? Because I always ran and jumped in bed with my. I tried to jump in bed with my mom and dad, <laughs> and then all of a sudden, after that, I would run and jump in bed with her, and she'd go, "No, get out of here." Did you ever do that? Just oh yeah, out always, of holy terror, uh, <laughs> like help. You know, I can just say this: that I probably saw things in that funeral home that a young <laughs> child should never see. But uh, I guess it's just the, you know, the, everyone in town is on Main Street, and so there's this light on in this part of the house that was the embalming room, and if you go down Main Street at school, they'd say, "Hey, you know, I saw the light on last night. You know, who passed away?" Oh my goodness! <laughs> they, they knew. That the, oh some, my goodness! I know our dog is laughing over there night. too. <laughs> That's saw the light on last night. <laughs> Somebody was working last night, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, you're funny. Wow, that is funny. Um, I know that you went through a lot. I call it a job journey. Mm -hmm. Like I've been through a job journey. Uh, you grew up Methodist mm -hmm. and grew up in a Christian home. Yeah which you were raised with Christ, yeah. but like me, you got far away from Christ. Yeah. And as my father would say, you sowed your wild oats. Yes. Do you want to share as I that? Could. <laughs> as soon as you could. <laughs> you know, you're raised in a small town yeah. and your dad's the, the funeral director in town. You know, we have to go to church every Sunday. Yeah. And that's what, you know, I'm glad we did. It gave me the foundation. And then also mm -hmm. at a real early age, I had a cousin that was, uh, you know, destined to be in the ministry. And, yeah. and he really led me to Christ where uh, I actually, you know, I gave my life to Christ when I was a very young child. So yeah. I got saved early. Yep. But then found your way. As soon as I was able to leave my out. little town and go, you know, it was. a. Uh, so you partied hard. Yeah, I'm okay. afraid so. <laughs> Guilty as charged. Uh, high energy. Yeah. You know. But see, but, God uh, uses people like us. Because he knows that we've been through it all, we've seen it all, yeah. and um, we can identify with others yes. who are also on yeah. their wild road. And There's hope. Yeah, yeah. there is hope. And it's just a matter of timing. Yeah. That's right. You had to go through all of that to yeah, make you to, who you to are today. To have a story to be on your show. I That's to right. That. <laughs> How could we have a victory story without that? <laughs> Amen. So now, so fast forward, mm -hmm. so your cousin led you to Christ mm -hmm. at an early age, yeah. but then you strayed away. Um, you then, mm -hmm. now you moved to... Yeah, after after school... Uh, you went to college I, and... I played football in college, right. and after running that course, then I was out of time. I didn't have a real career I wanted to go to, and so I had to buy some time, and the only thing I knew was this funeral business. So there's a few of these funeral schools around the country, one's in Dallas. So that's what got me to Texas, and I would spend the next 20-some-odd years... Uh, in Texas. See, I didn't even know there were things called funeral school. <laughs> Got to go to funeral Did school. Did anybody else know that or am I just, you didn't know that either? <laughs> so that's amazing. So you mm. were going with that. And yeah. so that's how you ended up in Dallas. Yes. Okay. And, then, and then from there, I had to serve an internship, an apprenticeship with a okay. funeral home. I did that in Austin. And so I moved it from Dallas to Austin and spent 20 years in Austin, Texas. Okay. Got married young when I was there was married for 16 years, never had kids. And that whole time, again, I knew the Lord. I knew I was saved. I was, mm -hmm. in a, I was attending one of the biggest Baptist churches in Austin, Texas, mm -hmm. which was good. Yeah. But I still never had any, uh, the devil was just whooping up on me the whole time. You know, I mean, I just felt like I didn't have any power or authority you know, it's just the same stuff. I was repeat, repeating the same cycles. Okay. And I was being defeated time and time again. Finally, this marriage after 16 years uh, ends in divorce. And mm -hmm. so, you know, I'm at, I'm at ground zero. And I often say that if you're at ground zero, it's not a bad place. That's right. Because the bottom has a really great foundation. 
And from there, there's no place to go but up. That's true. So I spent uh, a, a little bit of time, you know, a few years in that place. But it was in that place to where I really started seeking the Lord. I got into the Word. I had a lot of time to myself. Okay. And then a, a young lady gave me this big, thick book <laughs> called God's Generals. And I was like, there's no way in a million years I'm going to read this big book. It's just too big. It intimidated me. <laughs> so I was getting on an airplane. I put it in my briefcase and I said, I'll give this thing one chapter. And it opened my eyes to the baptism of the Holy Spirit to where you mm. could really receive Christ at a deeper level and actually get power and have authority over the enemy. And so I received the baptism and I started to exercise it. And I was born again, and there was transformation. And the next real significant... Can you explain to people what born again means? Because a lot of people out there are watching yeah. are not familiar with that term. It just... Do you want to explain it? Well, I, I mean, even though I've been saved, and I knew that if, you know, I got saved at an early mm -hmm. age, but there was something about receiving the Holy Spirit, that baptism of the Holy Spirit experience, that once I did that, and with, you know, with the evidence of tongues and practicing my, my, my tongues, my prayer language yeah. and going deeper in my walk, um, all of a sudden the enemy knew that uh, he had, he a, had to back off yeah, because I, a general was born. That was it. A general was birthed. That was it. So he I think that's that. why they call it born again, perhaps. I mean, you're actually. Because it's starting a new life it's starting again. A new it life. really is. Yeah. So I definitely have had that, that old life where I was saved, but yet just getting defeated, 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 repeating the same old stupid patterns. And then the born again experience, and all of a sudden now I've got some power and authority. And you had no um, desire to go and do the other bad boy stuff anymore, right? No, but I tell you, there was another step that iced the whole deal for me. Okay. And that's why anybody, anytime today I, I meet anybody in the healing and deliverance ministry, I, I love those people because I think it's just the coolest thing. I was, I was in business and I was prospecting and, and this guy agrees to meet with me at a Starbucks restaurant in Plano, Texas. And he pulls up in this nice car. He's well-dressed, good-looking Italian guy from Chicago. And I'm like, you know, what's your story? And he says, well, I was an insurance executive and God zapped me into the ministry. I've got this anointing for healing and deliverance and I work out of my house. And he really got my interest. Hmm. And I was, I, was, I was at the right time in my walk to where I was really interested in this new level of healing and deliverance. So I started to go to his house and, and, and hang out with him and spend time. He started to take me through this deliverance uh, stuff to where it'd take me back in my mind, way back, way back, way back, way back to where the first time, you know, you heard a lie from the enemy, whether it was you're not good enough or you're insignificant or something that's not of God. It's yes. from the enemy. Yes. And he, he, he has no power, but he, he can lie. That's right. <laughs> and, and, and that's it's in what our he's mind. good at he, doing. You know, it's in our mind. So what happens, we hear that and we believe it, we receive it, and then we start to become the lie. The lie. And that's, that's mm. the enemy's whole thing. He attacks early and young. But the good news is you can go back and command that, that demon, that lie, out to yes. be gone. And you can be healed by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> Somebody's listening to this today. A lot of you are listening to this today. And this is living proof. Brad is living proof that you don't have to live by the lie that was a curse that was put on you as a kid, that you're no good, you're never going to get better, or you're in poverty, and that's the way the family lived, and that's the way it's going to be for generations, and you're never going to have any more, and this is the way life is, and nobody cares about you. You don't have to live under that curse. You don't have to live under those lies that the enemy called the devil has put under you. and if you're listening carefully, Brad will help educate you on how to get it out 
so you can have a victorious life. Would you say that again? What they can do to yeah, I mean, it's just get so, away from those so, lies. So huge. I mean, you go through that process, and you got to go back in time. You got to remember when's the first time you re heard something that was not not of God. It was a lie as a child, or by maybe somebody said it to you, or a thought process. Yes. Is that what you're talking about? And little about? kids, you know, kids are mean. You know, yeah, they say little things. bullies saying that. Yeah, you're overweight. You're. I mean, it could be. Some, you're stupid. I mean, it could be. A number of things. So you right? go back to when you first heard it. And and you just pray the blood of Jesus into that area. And it's got to go. And it's replaced with the love of Christ. <laughs> and all of a sudden you're free of that. That's what freedom... Whew. That's what freedom is. So many people are looking for freedom because... You know, they have, they've bought into the lie, oh. they've believed it, they've received it, they've become it, and they don't know how to get out. That's it. They're yeah. like, They're in you bondage. know, caught in a trap. They're caught in a trap. But the good news is Jesus on the cross, he died for all of this stuff. You know, not just our salvation, but our healing, our deliverance. Everything, the healing. Everything that we need. Yes. He He did it on the, on the cross. And so we can... We can receive that. And so it kind of takes me to the next step in my, my whole walk and my journey was, you know, baptism of the Holy Spirit was huge. And then the healing and the deliverance, the freedom that came from that. Okay. Yes. But I still had a couple big areas, you know, um, one was forgiveness. Yes. Mm. So I moved to California. I get plugged in with a with Mike and Janice Hudgens at, at Vineyard in Laguna Niguel. Every Wednesday morning, they have a marketplace ministry uh, session. At the Vineyard. At the Vineyard, yeah. And and so I just soaked in that every Wednesday for, for about three years. And what had to happen next was forgiveness. That's another thing that keeps people blocked from the blessing. That's right. So I was free. And that was cool. And I had a great relationship with the Lord and all was good. But I still had to get through this forgiveness. And the forgiveness was not about what somebody had done to me. It was about, it was about me. I had to forgive me mm, for that's all the a things. a big one, Ugh. forgiving yourself. How did you do that? Because I had Can years. Can you tell us how you did that? Uh, number one, I had years away from the Lord, really. Okay. So in those years, I had a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff <laughs> to forgive yourself for. Yes. So during, through that process, there was time with the Lord, soaking with the Lord, you know, relationship with the Lord. He would bring to mind these things. And bring up to your remembrance. Yeah. And I would just pray, forgive me, please. And so I went through the whole thing of being forgiven. And so I gave, forgave myself. Shortly thereafter, I got turned on to a book by Kenneth Copeland called about receiving the blessing of the Lord. It's about Proverbs 10, 22. And this book, because this was what's coming next about receiving from the Lord, the blessings, the promises Right. All these things that, that Jesus died on that Christ, cross for us to have, we can have all this stuff, but we got to receive it. We got to believe it. We got to receive it for us to have it. Right. So I was blocked in the forgiveness thing. Now I'm delivered of, you know, I'm, I'm free. I get the forgiveness thing behind me. And now I move into this receiving mode through this book, literally. Can I, can I, I didn't realize you for there were so moment. many promises. I just wanted to interrupt you for one, yeah. one moment before we go into the book of Kenneth Copeland mm -hmm. because I really feel that there's other people out there that really need to get it, mm -hmm. how to forgive themselves oh. because we are walking around the wounded, mm -hmm. you know, wounded warriors. Yeah. And, um, and a lot of believers, a lot of people who know Jesus as Savior and, and who have received Jesus, but they haven't forgiven themselves. Or maybe you don't know that this is why you're stuck in a rut and feel like you can't get out because you have unforgiveness somewhere. Because I've heard other Christians go, 
Oh, I forgive everybody. I have forgiven. I've forgiven. Of course I have forgiven. But they don't really, they didn't really go through the process that you did to dig it out and pluck it out. And you know so, what? The, the Lord brought those things to mind. That's it. And, and he doesn't do it from a condemning. No. He just gently As you reminded spent time. me of these things. And believe me, I've done a lot of bad things. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people have. I mean to tell you. And the Lord gently reminded me of, of all these things. And I just ask his forgiveness. As you were spending time with him alone. You could, yeah. You could hear it or he just brought like a little... Oh, when you're, Scenario when you're, when you're reading the word, I yes. mean, that's how he speaks to us, right? It's the right. word. And, and so, yeah, so all these things come up and I'm like, oh my gosh, I deserve to be either dead or in prison for the rest of my I life. Know, I know a lot of us, a lot of us listen. So <laughs> what he's saying is some good juice is to help you because as God brings it to your memory, just ask him for forgiveness. He's a forgiving God. Yeah, and he right. says, once you ask for forgiveness, he puts it into the sea remember. of forgetfulness. He can't remember. <laughs> yes. And so then you can move past once you pluck all that stuff out. And by the way, once you ask for forgiveness on whatever it is, and you, you know you've received that forgiveness, if it ever comes back to mind again, it's not from him. That's right. It's not from him. So we got to discern our thoughts, cast down imaginations. That's it. Because this enemy is always out there yes. throwing stuff at us. So Good if we're word. not discerning our thoughts, so he throws that same thought back up. And I'm like, wait a minute, God forgave me of that. That's right. So I don't receive that anymore in Jesus' name. I just bind that yeah. thing off. Get thee behind me, Satan. He's already forgiven me. Amen. And I forgive myself. So, so I'm sorry, so the, I wanted to hear about that yeah. book. No, it's good stuff. And then the, the receiving <sighs> is this craziest thing when I was reading this book. I had the hardest time reading it. It's like I'd read it and it's just like there was blockage. I mean, there was like a, a, a spiritual force trying to not get me to read this book. Yeah. And it was. There was no, it made no sense that I just couldn't get through it and get through it. I, I read this book twice. And I was amazed by, number one, how many promises that God has for us mm. and how many things he wants for us. Mm. He loves us so much. He does. <laughs> I mean, you have a child. That you really get it because you can't imagine sacrificing your child. Mm -mm. You know? I don't know how so he, he did it. He did that for us. I know. <laughs> don't deserve it, but he did it. So he did it for all these promises. So now, guess what we think typically? It's like, I don't deserve, right? Mm -hmm. I don't deserve. Well, that's, that's a wrong thought. He did it for us to have, and he loves us so much we can't even relate to that, the depth of the love for us. So that's the, the book on receiving. And so finally... And how to receive the, this love, right? How to receive it. So finally, I couldn't get it in the mind. I couldn't get it in the natural. So finally, I just surrendered. I said, Jesus, um, I surrender to, I'll, I'll receive it. I just receive it all right now in Jesus' name. I give up. I don't know it. I can't figure you it sent out. Up I the don't white understand flag. it. But I'll receive it. Mm. So guess what happens after I surrender to receiving his, his promises, his gifts, his benefits, his blessings? Then comes total restoration. I mean... I'm in my mid forties and all of a sudden I meet my dream wife who we have two dream children with. You do. You have the perfect, gorgeous family, the perfect. <laughs> these guys are the typical Christmas card, perfect family. I mean, I have my first kid at 50. What? You mean you're Don't not 30? Don't want to date myself. That makeup that you put on me. Made me <laughs> you mean you're not 30? <laughs> oh, my goodness. Give so, me some of that. So, I mean, you know, the, these people that are in that age bracket, that they think it's too late. Yes, it's not too late. I mean, it I've, lost, too I've late. lost everything. I was sitting there in my mid-40s at the very bottom, zero, on the ground, you know, great foundation, <laughs> nowhere to go but up. And baptism of the Holy Spirit, healing but of the But after leverage. you went through that whole process of mm -hmm. plucking out yeah. the darkness, plucking out all the lies from the enemy and forgiving yourself and mm -hmm. receiving the real true love, 
that's when boom god now, says bam he the, blessed you with a beautiful wife two perfect <laughs> children we've got about two minutes left so i want to fast forward he's got a gorgeous home a fabulous the blessing fabulous life that the lord has given him but none of this happened until he was ready to just surrender it all and say i can't do this anymore he knew his life wasn't working as it was and when you turned everything over that's when god well, blessed you on the financial side then you know going from ground zero after losing everything right and now on the receiving side in this Wednesday morning, we'd pray for 10 time financial increase, you know, 10 time in, give us 10 time increase. In one year, we experienced a 10 time financial increase. And in, within four years, we received a 20 time, a 20 time financial Whew. in the blink of an eye, mm. beautiful wife, beautiful family, business, 20 time financial increase. So God has blessed you abundantly. Yeah. Yeah with the perfect life, the perfect mm -hmm. wife, the perfect children, mm -hmm. the perfect All company. Done. And you were certainly on your victory road and thank you for sharing your story. And well, I know I, you've touched I, some I lives today. I hope we today. gave the devil black eye today. Yes, you have. We've and given it, them two black eyes. And I hope we've encouraged eyes. some people today. And I wanna, mm -hmm. yes, we have. And I always end up with the RSVP prayer. Uh, this is to guarantee your seat in heaven because you definitely wanna have a reserved seat in heaven. and. The Lord told me a while back that the kingdom of heaven is like an event on earth. Any special event, you have to RSVP or your name's not written in the guest book and there's just no reserved seat and you just don't get in. He said, no matter what religion you are, he wants us all to RSVP to get our name in his book and it's called the Lamb's Book of Life. So if you're not guaranteed that you're going to heaven or that your name is in his big book, can you just join Brad and I as we touch and agree right now? Just repeat after me the simple RSVP. Heavenly Father, Heavenly in Father, Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I come to you a sinner. I come to you a sinner. And I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. As I forgive. As I forgive. All those. All those. Who have sinned against me. Who have sinned against me. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Christ. That Jesus is the Christ. The Son of the living God. The Son of the living God. Who died for me. Who died for me. And arose for me. And arose for me. So that I can spend eternity with you. So I can spend eternity with you. Please put my name in your book. Please put my name in your book. And reserve me a seat. And reserve me a seat. As I follow you all the days of my life. As I follow you all the days of my life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. If you've said this prayer for the first time, we'd love to hear from you. You can find me on leadbenton.org.org. My name is on the screen, leadbenton.org. And I want to, again, thank our beautiful brother. Thank you. Our precious friend and brother for his wonderful testimony. And I just love how God has worked through you and brought you to your victory road. Yeah, praise the Lord. Keep the faith as you are walking towards your victory road. God bless you, and we'll see you soon. Won't you come with me to victory down victory road?